Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about why Joker 2 failed. And for those who are unaware, Joker 2 is struggling at the box office at the moment. Mainly because it's a weird concept of a movie. I mean the first movie was a blockbuster that hit a billion dollars. It was over the billion dollar mark. Whereas this, uh, number two of this, is struggling to even make its money back. Now why is that? Because making a movie like Joker 2 should have really been a situation of just because we can doesn't mean we should. The number one, the first movie was a great standalone movie. If you were going into that without any prior knowledge of the DC universe, without any prior knowledge of the Joker, it's a great standalone movie. It's something that you don't need prior knowledge of. People know who the Joker is, obviously, but you don't really need to know much more about Origins or anything of that. So with this, you can kind of, you can enjoy this movie. You can kind of switch off and be like, yeah, I just want to watch the Joker movie. It's a dark take on the Joker, which DC is in love with their dark takes of uh, villains and heroes. But I believe it worked because it was a well, it was a well-oiled machine. It was well-structured. It was well-told. And the audience loved it because it was clear in what it wanted to be. Number two is a musical for a DC movie. They didn't understand the core audience. And I haven't seen the movie. I will say that up front, full discretion. I have not seen part two. I will see it when it comes to digital. I will see it. I will stream it on like Binge in Australia or what is essentially equivalent to HBO Max. But I will essentially watch that when it comes to digital. And why would I do that? Why would I not go run out and see it in the cinema? Because it's not, I'm not the core audience for that movie. I was the core audience for this movie. I was the core audience. They were shipping it directed at myself. They were shipping it directed at people who are into DC or into like comics in general who might want a bit more of like a take on the Joker. Not like a, hey, this is 100% honest, real to the comics take of it. But it was a standalone. It was meant to be something else. It was meant to be an Elseworlds or whatever, as um, James Gunn's calling it. He's calling it Elseworlds. But that's what it was meant to be. I didn't sign up for a musical. Like, I didn't... I don't want to see a musical take on the Joker. Like, I get people enjoy musicals. Don't get me wrong. The Sound of Music is a great musical. There are a lot of great musicals. Um, Mary Poppins is a great musical. If I want to watch a musical, I'll watch something like that. When I'm watching the Joker, I want a dark, gritty take on the DC characters. I want a dark, gritty take on the Joker. Now, obviously, Top Phillips wanted to do something in the first film that he's obviously done in this film. As the film ends, there are things that happen from what I've heard, and I'm not going to go into those because I don't want to spoil it. But people like Christopher Nolan stopped him. This was when Christopher Nolan were still at Warner Brothers. Christopher Nolan stopped him from doing some things in the initial film that he's obviously went back and he's done that now in the second film. Um, also, Lady Gaga, I've heard, is, um, you know, Lady Gaga, look, I don't think she's a bad Harley Quinn. I think she gave her all. I think she, from what I've seen, she was passionate about what she was doing. She signed on before she even knew the script. But a musical, like, Lady Gaga is great in musicals. Don't get him wrong. Like, A Star is Born is a great music film. Um, but The Joker, I don't understand why you would need to do a musical take on The Joker. I mean, it might work as a play. I'm sure it would work as a play, like an, a musical interpretation of the Joker. But I don't understand how this got it so wrong. Its core demographic are people like me. People who will go and watch superhero movies. I haven't watched Madam Web, though. And I haven't watched Aquaman. I haven't watched um, Shazam 2. I haven't watched a couple of superhero movies in the past few months or years. Just because some of the movies are getting it so wrong. And my core demographic, I am the core demographic for these movies because I love, I love comic books. I love comic book movies. I love to see an interpretation of a character that I know and love. But then to see something like the Joker where it's kind of not the real Joker. It's not the Joker that faces Batman. And that's what it was clearly labeled as. It's not, it's clearly labeled as not the Joker that fights the Batman. It's different. But. I want to see this take on it. I want to see what part one did, and I did enjoy part one. But then to switch the whole vibe of the movie into a musical, and this is part two now, did it need to have a part two? Part one was such a great standalone, and I think a lot of the audience sees it as a great standalone. 
to where, okay, we needed to do a part two because it made one point whatever billion dollars. And I was obviously going to get a follow-up. But did we really need to have Joker 2? Especially one that is completely different to the first one. That's why it's struggling to make its money back. Especially when, in a day and age where the cost of living has went up, people are not spending money to go and see subpar movies like they once did. I mean, Metropolis, Francis Ford Coppola, did not even, could not even make his money back. And if Francis Ford Coppola's movie is struggling, the Joker is struggling as well. So, like, because subpar is not what anyone wants to see. No one wants to sit there and waste two, three hours of their time watching a movie that they're bored hoopless with, you know? They're not going to sit there and just sit there and just watch a movie for the sake of watching a movie just because it has the Joker title or just because it has Francis Ford Coppola or whatever attached to it. Modern movies are being made just for the sake of making movies. And I get it. There is a lot of the industry looking at, oh, well, when we put these movies out, no one's going to see them, so we need to make what we stick with. Like, oh, this way to a billion dollars, let's make a part two of this. But while not understanding that the core demographic are not going to see a musical. <laughs> you, do you get me? It's like, if they had just made a continuation on of this Joker and said, like, okay, he's in the asylum now, he's in Arkham Asylum, he's this and this and this, it would have been nice to say, like, okay, here's part two. He gets a protege, which is Harley Quinn, and that's his doctor. And then you go from there, like, you build it and then go, like, okay, there's this young Joker or this young... I don't even think they should have introduced Harley Quinn. Like, yes, obviously, look, Harley Quinn and the Joker were a big sell of this movie. But they could have just went, okay, we've got... The Joker's taken a protege, and then that Joker goes on to become the Joker synonymous with facing Batman. Like, you know, you could have set it up in a way that was really smart and been like, okay, he's learning from this guy who just does things on a whim. And then the Joker, you know, there's a lot of stories that could have been done there. Like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of interesting takes that could have been met. Instead, we've got a musical Joker, which no one wants. That's why no one's seeing it. That's why people have, are not going in droves to see the new Joker movie. And word of mouth, people feel like it's incoherent. That's the biggest argument I've seen from a lot of review sites. It doesn't really know its direction. It doesn't really know who it's targeting. It doesn't really know who its target audience is. And people are not going to see it because it's not fun. It's not a date night movie. It's nothing to that you can go with to a family or it's a dark take like the Batman was. The Batman was a darker take on the Batman character. And yeah, Robert Pattinson, people can say what they say, say about Robert Pattinson, but the movie was what it was supposed to be, and it was not supposed to be like a clean version of the Batman and, you know, all that stuff. It was something different. Joker was meant to be something different as well. And yeah, part two is certainly different, but not in a good way. Movies should just cater to their core demographic. And I get, you need to expand the audience, I get that. But when a movie made 1.5 billion, why would you change anything? Why would you change the core of essence of the movie? It made 1.5 billion. Just follow up on it. Say, okay, first movie made 1.5 or whatever. Let's uh, let's do a follow up. Let's make it a nice, decent take on it. And I get that Nolan was somewhat involved in giving at least advice to Top Phillips about the first movie. And now Nolan's no longer in Warner Brothers. But still, you mean you couldn't at least like? I heard that through um, a few few people online are saying that. Even James Gunn, like, did James Gunn get anywhere involved? Like, I heard that he may have been given notes or something to, um, to Todd Phillips during the production of this movie, but, part two. But, um, apparently Todd Phillips didn't use any of what James Gunn had to say. The guy running DC who's going to hopefully put it back on track. Why would you not listen to at least James Gunn? Someone who's made three very successful movies in superhero genre. Four, if you count Blackburn. Or Brightburn, sorry. But, you know, there are so many different things that went wrong with Part 2 that Warner Brothers only have themselves to blame for this. Where were the test screenings? Where were the audience teasers of, like, hey, here's a scene from the movie, um, it's a bit of a musical take of the Joker, put it on The Tonight Show, and then watch people go ape shit over it. Of, like, this isn't the Joker, what, what is this? That's how we got Sonic to change his character model. The audience went ape shit over it, and then... The studio actually listened. Sony listened, or was it not Sega? Who produced the Sonic movie? It was Paramount. Paramount listened, you know? 
this is why test screenings are important. This is why you need to release certain scenes of the movie to test. I mean, with uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, I mean, it had a built-in audience, but we kind of knew we were going to get Hugh Jackman back, and the test screening is the first, like, whatever X-Men movies. But then we still had to see how that chemistry was, so that's why they were releasing scenes of Deadpool and Wolverine to test the market, to say, hey, this is what it's going to be at its essence. And that talked people into the cinema. This is not talking people into the cinema. Part 2 is not going to sell to an audience that doesn't want a musical. That's all I have to say about that. Warner Brothers, you messed it up bad. You had the chance to have a great franchise that if part two did well for this, you could have had a part three, but you've just destroyed another franchise. Sorry, Warner Brothers, but I love DC, but you really should have, you shelved Roadrunner and Road, uh, what is it? Coyote versus Acne, whatever it is. Acne, but the one, the one I'm saying a Roadrunner movie. You shelved that, but you couldn't shelve the Joker part two. You should have looked at what was there and said, hey, this is awful. Like, we can't release this. Or if if you're just shipping anything that goes, like if Warner, if you are, David Zasloff, if you are shipping anything at this point, Joker, then release the Roadrunner movie. Release um, Batgirl. Release, release it all. I'm just saying, like, you've got these movies that were vaulted because they were so bad, but yeah, you put out Joker 2, which is... Possibly even worse, you know? Anyways, that's my rant for today. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. What do you think went wrong with the Joker? Have you seen the Joker? I'm personally not going to see it until it comes to digital. Like, it's got such bad word around it. And I'm not the target audience. I know I'm not the target audience. So I'm not going to go see it in the cinemas. It's made, it's not, it wasn't made for me. It, and yeah, that's the thing. Like, oh, well, don't get on the internet and complain then if it's not for you. Well... <laughs> that's why it loses money, guys. If that's your thinking, just be aware that's why it's ma losing money. Because people aren't going to see it. Because the core audience that I'm in isn't going to see it. I'm just saying, that's all. If you, if you like this video, like, subscribe, drop a comment, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.